Um, so hello everyone, today's session is on GitOps Simplified and uh, um, like already I'll, I'll skip through majority of the introduction. Um, most of the things are already mentioned. Um, you can check out my YouTube channel and uh, Discord. Yeah, I'm working at Sivo. Uh, so Sivo is a company that provides managed Kubernetes based on K3S. And there is a community, a Kube Simplifier that I started that you should definitely join. So let's dive into the session uh, right away. So what what is GitOps? So we, we'll go through a complete flow so that we have a complete story, why we need it, what is GitOps, principles, and, and all that stuff. Uh, so GitOps is not a very new concept, to be honest. It, it's been there. It's It has been practiced uh, for quite some time now. There have been organizations coming together to define set principles, best practices, and uh, making sure that it is it is done in a right way. So when you when you talk about GitOps, everything is in Git. Um, your your infrastructure, your applications, everything you are defining in Git, and it gets deployed automatically. So your your infrastructure gets created automatically. Your applications get deployed automatically. Uh, now since it is in Git, so it is version controlled. So everything will be a version deployment that gives you an easy way to roll back as well. And it, it maintains consistency uh, between different teams, devs, ops, and, and other teams who are collaborating on infrastructure parts, who are collaborating on the application parts. Uh, so all those things are there. Uh, constant feedback. Constant feedback is very important from the application, the metrics that is getting generated, whether the application is healthy, if any replicas uh, goes down, then the constant feedback um, is, is uh, important. Faster time to production, yes. Um, since you are only managing with Git, so once the infrastructure is set up and you have GitOps tools installed, you have all the repositories in place to be watched by different tools, then the only thing you need is to kind of uh, deploy on Kubernetes, uh, sorry, uh, the push to Git, and, and it will be uh, deployed to production with the pipeline that you have dev stage and testing all the scenarios and going to production. Um, it also brings standardization across your organization because um, you would know the process of putting out a feature in production or in, in a particular branch or in a particular uh, cluster. So everything is in, in, in a GitOps way, in managed, um, you know, managed via Git, and it, it brings standard. So overall, GitOps in, in very simple terms is everything is in Git. You have a Kubernetes cluster and uh, you have agents that will be pulling information from Git and will be deploying clusters, deploying applications to the cluster, maintaining um, the different versioning of the application and advanced uh, stuff as well, with which we'll be talking about later. Now, I, I told you previously, like uh, organizations are coming uh, together to create the define the principles. So the four principles of GitOps are uh, it's, it's declarative. So all your infrastructure and applications are as code. Like we have already, you know, heard about Terraform uh, cross plane in previous talks, uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, the thing is the true GitOps way of doing things is when you have your infrastructure also in Git repository, you commit to Git and obviously you have a control plane cluster. So you commit to Git, your, your stuff running in the control plane cluster will be watching that Git repository and will be creating the clusters on the fly. We'll be deploying the apps to the cluster, uh, versioned and immutable. So that's the second princi uh, principle. So again, Git is a single source of truth and everything, all the um, stuff is versioned. So you, when, whenever you commit, you, you get that commit ID. You can use the SHA, you can use the, some of the CI tools in like GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub Actions, and you can push those uh, with respect to that particular SHA, and then it will be deployed automatically uh, because uh, the GitOps is already connected. Pulled automatically, continuous pulling of the desired stage. Uh, I think in the previous talk, you heard about drift and, and all those terminologies. So that's that's where it, it fits in. Like you have to continuously pull the desired state because if you have told your application needs five replicas to run, if anything goes wrong, then your GitOps infra or the GitOps stuff that you have deployed should be able to pull that continuously or just uh, observe or monitor the state which is current 
which is the life and the desired and compare those and apply if there is any differences. Continuously recycled, observing the system and applying the desired state is very important when you talk about GitOps principles. So uh, it, it's continuously recycled. Uh, you have, uh, you can definitely uh, define your interval times uh, that you want to do with respect to those uh, with respect to different tooling as well. So those are some of the GitOps principles um, that are in place. Now, why, why GitOps? Uh, you know, I have a CI, I can, uh, you know, I have Git, I, I can build the image, I can push the image, the CI part has already existed for a long time now. Uh, but what about the deploy part? The deploying to Kubernetes is where the continuous delivery portion comes. And regular pipelines, in regular pipelines, we what we use? We use kubectl apply. Uh, we, if, if we, uh, we write some bash scripts or some cron jobs, to do this jobs, what we'll be doing? We'll be doing kubectl apply. We'll be um, providing the Kubernetes access and the cloud credentials some or the other way. Uh, but still, the monitoring will be missing, right? Uh, we again need to have some sort of mechanisms to uh, monitor those application and make sure whatever we have in the Git repository, they are matching with whatever is there and deployed in the cluster. And if not, then they, they do it. That is where GitOps is needed. Uh, but it is not needed in this way, like in the way where you are manually doing all these things or somehow uh, calculating how, how to do this. So there are tools that helps you in, in doing the GitOps the right way, uh, especially when it comes to Kubernetes. And um, But GitOps is not only for Kubernetes. It is for the traditional workloads as well, but majority of it is actually being used in Kubernetes. So we'll be discussing two tools today. One is Flux and one is Argo CD. Uh, so fl first is uh, Flux. So Flux is a CNCF incubating project. Uh, it's a CNCF project and the V2 version came early 2022. And it uh, Flux keeps the Kubernetes clusters in sync with Git and automatic updates. Um, all the points that I mentioned, it, it does that. Uh, so it syncs from Git, image reference update in the YAML file, sending notification, managing Helm releases, managing customizations. So you can have YAML files, you can have customizations, you can have uh, Helm charts, and everything can be in Git. And you have defined your uh, cluster and cluster state and the applications in Git. Flux will be installed in your Kubernetes cluster. So you will be bootstrapping uh you know your cluster uh, and installing flux so you will be bootstrapping the repository and installing flux in your cluster and that will be monitoring the github uh which is there the git repository and any change which is there it will be you know uh deploying it to kubernetes in some to some of the node which is a, a worker node where your actual workload runs in a particular namespace uh they all like it supports multi-tenancy uh, multi-cluster deployment and all those stuff as well uh, let's see on an architecture level how it works. So you have Git, GitLab, or um, and you have a source controller. So when you deploy Flux, there is a component called source controller, which is deployed onto the cluster. Uh, now, source controller will take whatever is there in the uh, repositories, and it will talk to the other controller based on whatever is there in the in the repository, like the customized controller and the help controller. Now you can use plain YAML files and not customized, but Flux automatically converts those YAML files on the fly to customize and then they deploy. So it, it heavily relies on the customized controller, and then you have the help controller for the Helm repositories. So get manifest in the cluster, bundle them as uh, artifacts, by creating custom resources. So we will be creating the custom resource uh, for the for this. Flux also has something called image reflector controller and automation controller, which means uh, it can monitor the repository. So if there is a change in the image version, the tag, then you can it can automatically uh, take that, push that to the Git repo. And obviously Flux is already monitoring that Git repo. So it will apply that changes to your Kubernetes cluster. So this is how the complete cycle can be um, thought of when you are talking or thinking about Flux and how it is doing GitOps. Uh, now I told you bootstrap. So this is how Flux would be uh, bootstrapping. You can use Flux CLI or the Terraform provider. Um, so the command is simple. You first download Flux and you use the command Flux bootstrap, uh, GitHub repository, uh, give the owner repository, the branch, the path. Uh, and when you do kubectl get 
pods and stuff like that so it will have the helm controller the customized controller source controller notification controller all these will be there and uh, they are actually as deployments and same you have the services from them and it will create its own uh, directory structure inside the github um, where it will be having the components so that it can talk to flux so that's how flux works and does uh, stuff in a gitops way uh, it's 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 pretty interesting uh, now let's talk about another interesting tool which is argo so argo uh, has many projects first of all argo cd is one of them so you have workflows rollouts um, and and two other projects which are there like there are four uh, main argo is the main umbrella argo cd is part of that so argo cd is not the only one which is there uh, but we are talking about argo cd specifically because we want to kind of discuss kitops so a typical architecture what it will it will look like in today's demo will be um, a repository in that repository you have github actions uh, the github actions will be building and pushing um, a particular file to a particular folder structure inside the same repository and you have argo cd which is installed onto the kubernetes cluster argo cd is pulling the particular directories changes so as soon as there is a change in that particular directory done using github actions argo cd will pull that change and deploy onto a particular namespace on a node uh, wherever the application has to be done um, picked up by the scheduler of course uh, so that's how today's demo will look like and that's how the argo cd would be looking in the picture uh, so gitops again git as a single source of truth uh, Argo CD, easily trackable, easy rollbacks. Uh, you can have disaster recovery setups. Uh, for example, you can have a, cl um, a cluster A, a cluster uh, B. Uh, so if a cluster A goes down, a cluster B, you can have like pointed to Argo CD and you can have apps of apps like the application set as soon as the cluster is registered, all those apps will be uh, deployed onto the new cluster. Uh, you can have SSO, you can have multi-cluster. Uh, so multi-cluster is very, very awesome when you talk about Argo CD and we will we'll be talking about that. So same application can be deployed across all cluster using something called application set. It is part of Argo CD from the 2.3 onwards. Uh, you can also define using customization files, different configurations of the same file to be deployed across different environments. So you can do that using a customization and you can define uh, what all files will be there for dev stage and prod. Uh, those are very powerful features. Uh, it has a very ve rich web UI, which is, I think, enough to do anything for the operators. Uh, it also has the CLI uh, that is there. You can use the CLI for, you know, for projects, for connecting the clusters, um, for uh, adding the destinations and all that, so on and so forth. Uh, Prometheus metrics that you can um, use, audit trails for app events and API calls, uh, pre-sync and post-sync hooks, uh, which, which are there. So that's what Argo CD is. Uh, when it's working, it's very simple and similar to what we talked about. User um, or a CI goes and pushes to Git. Uh, so there is a repo server. A uh, repo server is maintaining the internal cache of the repository because not every time you need the copy of the whole repository, you just need the Git diff. Uh, so it do does that. Uh, then you have the main controller, which is there. It actually syncs from taking from the repository server and the live state from the API server. And it makes sure that they both are remain in sync. Replicas goes down, it makes sure they are in sync. Any image change so seen in the repo server, make sure it is in sync. Um, then uh, it, it keeps on notifying uh, the UI. So the notification changes are instant. Like if, if it goes down, then you'll, you'll be able to see in the UI that something is happening. Diff is getting applied, uh, all that thing. So you'll be able to see that in the uh, Argo UI as well. Uh, and then yes it, it obviously deploys to there when you are in the ha mode so argo offers a ha mode installation very simple kubectl apply command is there that you can use for ha installation uh it installed dex which can be used for authentication repo server is there notification controller um uh, it started part of as argo labs so there are many awesome projects going in argo labs and once it reaches reaches a maturity state then that project is into argo cd so again from 2.3 dot three i believe or 2.3.x uh notification controller also became part of the main argo cd repository 
uh, and then the server that exposes the API and consumed, which is consumed by the CLI and the web UI. So web UI and the CLI interacts directly with Argo server. So you need to provide the server. Um, and the app management, RBAC management. So Argo has its own RBAC where you can create users and admins and stuff like that. Uh, auth delegation to external identity providers, YDC, uh, listen, um, uh, listen to the uh, GitHub webhook events as well can be done. Uh, also, you get application controller, uh, uses Argo CD repository server to get the manifest and uh, creates API server to get the live state. And it also has uh, the Redis as the HA proxy. So that was in the um, HA mode. So now you know what Flux is. You know what GitOps is, the GitOps principles, what Flux is, where Argo sets in, how they work both. Let's see some of the differences because uh, that's that's also important to understand the, the differences. So Flux is incubating project and Argo is also incubating project. Flux is contributing by the 14 companies argo is actually much more uh, i forgot to change the number over here uh, so it's it's i think more than 30 plus uh, contributing companies so argo cd is on a higher state of the contribution in terms of collaboration when you talk about uh, bootstrapping i showed you the screenshot of flux bootstrapping so that is used for install and uh, bootstrap via the flux cli there is no native mechanism for bootstrapping, though there is an external project, open source project by Codefresh that can be used. Uh, but again, bootstrapping is, is simple. You just uh, apply Argo CD to install, and then you can use the CLI to kind of uh, create projects and stuff, or you can just use the Argo UI, which is there. Uh, next portion is the reconciliation. Uh, built on GitOps toolkit and a reconciliation can be set per component. So. In Flux, this is an advantage where you can set the reconciliation on per object which is there. But in Argo, you can it, it's a global setting which is there for all the application. And three minutes is by default and can be changed via the config map, but it is not per application. It's like the global setting which is there. Uh, application deployment. So I told you, Flux always uses customize. Even if it's a plain YAML, Flux will create the customize on the fly. Whereas, um, in Argo CD, uh, it, it detects whether it's customized or uh, YAML and it will directly apply. It keeps it close to kubectl apply. For Helm, Flux uses Helm native Golang library. So you will be able to use the commands like Helm LS and, and all that against your cluster. But Argo renders that and pipes it to kubectl to keep it more native to the kubectl apply way. And you cannot use the Helm CLI command against the cluster when you're using Argo CD. Uh, Argo CD has something which is called application sets to deploy many, deploy too many clusters and you have control over the ordering uh, using the sync waves and phases. That is a very powerful feature where you have the control over the ordering, meaning uh, that once uh, you deploy, so you can wait for a particular file, a particular YAML file to get deployed and then you deploy the next one. So the ordering is in your hands. It's obviously, it, it's, uh, it would be more work on the config side, but it is possible and it gives you more flexibility and control secrets so again that there is a big difference in the secrets because flux provides a guide for managing encrypted secrets with mozilla sop sealed secrets and, and all the other stuff argo cd has plugins like vault and it totally leaves up to the user for uh, the secret management which is there uh RBAC, again a big difference uh, Flux RBAC relies strictly on the RBAC capability, capabilities of Kubernetes service accounts and all that stuff. Argo CD is very flexible and it has its own user groups mechanism and a very rich, a very rich UI, which is there. Um, uh, so yes, Argo CD, rich UI, Flux, no UI. It has an experimental UI, but that's, that's not official. Uh, so we keep it to no UI. Uh, so I hope you understood what Argo CD is, where Flux is, what GitOps is. Let's try to understand that with a, semp a sample demo. So let me reshare my screen. I will have to share the complete window, to be honest. Okay. So I already have Argo CD uh, deployed onto a Kubernetes cluster. So that will be a very interesting demo because what I'm trying to show you is the true GitOps way of doing things. Uh, so this is a repository, uh, KCD Chennai, that you can find. 
uh, there is there are two uh, repositories in it. One is called Infra, and in Infra I will be defining what clusters I want using crossplane that you already uh, I think learned in the last session. So it is good. So uh, what I have is I have a Kubernetes cluster which is kubectl get nodes. I already have a Kubernetes cluster in place, and I have kubectl get pods hyphen a i already have argo cd and crossplane configured so i already have crossplane sorry i already have crossplane configured and i already have uh, installed the cvo crossplane provider the cvo kubernetes crossplane uh, provider which is already there and you can see in argo system namespace i already have all the argo components which are there the repo server server application controller and stuff like that uh, now uh, the thing that we are going to show is i have an infra project. So in, in Argo CD, this is the UI, and you can create a new application which can monitor a particular repository. So what I did is, you can go here and you can see the app details. So this project is watching uh, the KCD Chennai repository, the infra folder. So any changes made to the infra folder will automatically be deployed onto this cluster. The manifest will be applied onto this cluster. So what we'll do is, Let's create a cluster. So let me show you first what all is there already. So Argo CD cluster list. So you can see I have three clusters, but one is the in cluster where Argo CD is already there. One is the test cross plane and one is the KCD Chennai. All uh, both of these are here and my in cluster is already running in some other region, which is there. So Let's do cluster three. I already have created a live demo example because this is a live demo. I hope it works. Uh, so I have defined uh, the spec section and all that stuff with respect to SIBO uh, Kubernetes, which is there. So I will do git add, git commit, live demo, git push origin main. So it has committed to this particular repository. So you can say uh, the cluster three dot yaml is committed to um, this repository, and it will automatically sync from this. But what we'll do is we'll do a manual sync because we don't have time to kind of wait uh, for that. And here we can check kubectl get Evo Kubernetes. We'll put that on watch. And we'll apply actually. Yep, you can see the live demo cluster is already getting created. So let's do Uh, hi, Sayan. We'll just to make a quick call. Uh, you have two more minutes to complete. Okay. Yeah, actually, the session got started late, so I, I had prepared okay. for 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How many more days? Yeah, I, I will take five more minutes. Five more minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing which is there is the, I'll quickly tell you because that is very important, the deploy folder, which has the application set.yaml. So this is what I was telling. In Argo, you can define something of kind application set and it can be deployed to any number of clusters. So when you set the generators, uh, what it means is all the clusters that you add to Argo CD will have this application deployed once it's added. So it will automatically deploy this particular application. And this application will be, you know, looking like this. So uh, that's a sample, just sample application, which is there. It is coming from this particular repository. Uh, so overall, what will be happening? Any changes made to this repository? There is a GitHub action, which will be changing the deploy folder. And after that, uh, any changes, obviously, uh, the application set internally creates application. So any changes made to this deploy folder will automatically be synced with all the uh, clusters which are there. So if I go to the applications, I can see uh, in, in all the clusters which is there, like the KCD Chennai, this is how the 
application will be uh, pre uh, present. So let me just refresh this. Okay, uh, again, in, in the in the view of time, what will happen is uh, once the cluster gets created, you need to run this command, which is, again, this just is available. I will put all the links in the description. So you have to Argo CD cluster add, and you have to uh, add a cluster pointing to the cube config file and uh, give the server name. So what this will, this command will do is it will add the cluster to Argo CD and since we have the application set, which is there. So as soon as the cluster will be added to Argo CD, you will be seeing a new tile, which will appear for a new cluster. And the application will, this application will be deployed onto that cluster. So this shows you the power. Like I can have, I can create hundred clusters, have a mechanism to get the cube config file and add to Argo CD. And then Argo CD will automatically deploy the hundred apps to all the clusters. And you can see the amount of uh, you know, effort that will be saved. And it's just one service. Suppose you have 50 plus services. So you can see how this will work. Uh, yep, that's that's pretty much it that I have to cover for the uh, for the presentation and demo. Uh, 